Hey everybody, we're going to be looking at the ES2. We're going to create a patch in here using the vector option. I want to explain a little bit about what that is and then show you how to do it. First of all, though, I want to get to a default simple patch. So I'm going to come into my factory settings under tutorial settings. And we're just going to do the analog saw right there. Just a, a basic saw going through very little. Now, what the vector does, it allows us to set some timings, these intervals, and then we can adjust a few different settings based on settings at those intervals. So, for instance, we have an XY target. So, we can choose any of these here that we want. We have those two options. And then we also can choose the mix. And this is the mix triangle right here. So you can set different things at the mix. So let me show you how this works. Before I actually go in there, I'm going to take away just the three we have. I'm going to control click right on the line here and say, initialize this to an eight by eight loop. That way I have that already set up. Now then I'm going to click on the solo point. And this allows me to hear each of these points. That's the first step. Then I'm going to come through here and choose some things to actually manipulate. So first we'll do the cutoff frequency one. That's the filter right here. So we're going to have to move the blend down so that it works on one. Like that. And then for the second one, I'm not sure yet. Let's leave it off for a moment. I just want to show you this first using this. So one. Let's turn this up all the way. And we'll shut the, the cutoff all the way down. And then I need to come through here. This is the last step in getting this set up the amount that this is going to actually manipulate. So with this set to one, cut off one, this turned off all the way, but our XY up to 100%, we should be hearing things. Now for this one, we're going to come in a little bit. So it's a little less open. Same for this one. For four, we're going to go mostly down here. For five, we're going to just pull it to the left. Six, back up. Seven, not quite up. And eight, not quite up. Now let's turn off the solo points. So you can hear this pattern. Now we can change the timing of this. Instead of having this be a percentage, we could do fixed timing and then actually do percentages of that. The other thing we can do is move this into a sync setting with a tempo. And so you can see I'm doing different subdivisions of the beat. It's not a hard sync. It means if I play a little bit after the beat, it's still going to start at a different place. So we have a lot of different timing settings with this. We can also change how they go between the steps. So this is a little bit more obvious with some of the other settings where it's not just turned on and off, but it would actually bend between them instead of just doing a whole step like that. So a lot of different options there. We can change the loop mode, forward, backward, alternate, we can have it be a certain number of loops or go infinitive. Here's our loop smoothing. Okay, 
So this is a great way to be able to change various parameters. The other thing then would be to add a second one if we wanted to. So we could do something like, well, let's start with the, the more obvious one for a minute, which is the mix. Say we have more than one oscillator here. And let's move this into the middle. We'll solo out this first one. And then for each of these, we could have a slightly different mix of these oscillators. This would also give us a bit of a pattern. Just like that. So we can get more and more complex with that. And then add the third one if we wanted to. And this one could actually be the pitch of these three. Turn up that. Now right now the reason why there's actually a little bit of wobble there is because I wasn't as careful up front when I was doing this initial setting. So we'd want to set most of these back to zero. I'm holding down the shift modifier to make sure I can do fine tune movements. Doesn't do as well as I would like sometimes. Just setting these mostly back to zero for the moment. And then we can actually change some of them. There we go. Two more to go. Last one. Okay, so now, say we wanted to actually do this where it changed pitches a little bit. Let's do that at the, like the final three ones here. So, seven, one, let's just go back up to seven for a moment. We'll actually solo these out for a second. <laughs> It's a little tricky with those patterns to get that right on, but it's a really cool sound. You don't want to do a lot of closed chords on this, really close ones where you're doing like tight triads. You can, it's just... They typically will sound better with fifths or fourths. Or simple triads. Okay, so you can see now how the vector is working in terms of giving us the ability to have the X, Y different parameters changing along the timing of the vectors and also the mix area over here. We don't have control over everything in our project. That means I can't do this, the whole vector thing, with more than just those three options. Those are the three that are available. So we could do any of these, but only two of them at a time. So resonance, we could do amplitude, panning is kind of cool. And so you could really incorporate any of these different pieces in there. Okay, so again, this has just been one look with the ES2, the vector area. This is a great part of this instrument, which is a little bit different than any of the other instruments. Now we can do similar things like this in other instruments like alchemy, but I still enjoy finding the unique things about each of the instruments and determining which ones make the most sense to use for various sounds that you're going for. And for this vector type synthesis, this is still one of my favorites. Okay, hope you're having a great week. Have a great weekend and we'll do some more videos next week.